again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrett. I'm just saying, I, we apologize for not having a show last week. Apparently, I just didn't even know it was Wednesday and missed it altogether. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Brendan and I were hanging out here and I, I was like, where does Tammy? I don't even know where I, I was know. or what I was doing, but oblivious, so, so yeah, it happens. Sorry you missed yeah. us, but here we are back in our full glory. That's I'm right. a little snotty. Oh, it's allergies. I got this thing with my eye again. So I'm wondering if it's not some sort of sty. I... Itchy. Oh, I bet you it is. And you know what actually works? And this is like an old, old like school. my yeah, yeah, my great grandmother kind of stuff. If you take, and it has to be real gold, so like a wedding ring or a something, and you rub it or you put it in boiling yeah. water so it turns hot, but then you got to be and careful. Not to burn your so it's better to rub it and you put it on that area. Yeah. It goes away. Interesting. And I thought it was like an old lady's well, tale, but thinking, it works. This is the third spring that I've had some issue where and and it's not normal allergy issues where your eyeball i mean i have that that's a different problem but this is more like the rim of my eye and under this part of my eye it's what just like here? insanity right so when i my last eye not that people need to know this but at my last eye exam my eye doctor asked me if i had had a sty and i was like well i used to get them as a kid but why are you at, like why and he thought there was a remnant like a and i was like so now i'm wondering if like, so, well, you know, who knows? could be, uh, could be anything. It's COVID or some craziness. Or well, something. I was just going to say it, <laughs> it could, could be, be that it's, you know, something that the bio weapon, yeah. I think, goes and tries to find, you know, the little weak spots and then uh, makes things a lot worse. Uh, I saw Biden announced yesterday. Uh, yeah, I, so uh, shocking. I just shared on Twitter. It made me laugh out loud. It's going to make a lot of people mad, but it is literally a, you know, how he had the the Joe oh, Biden I didn't see that one with the, the with the Nordstrom as the O, so it's Joe. Yeah. Um, I saw a fantastic clip for folks who aren't aware. So the the most most thinking people think it's very suspicious that the Nordstrom two mm. blew up, yes. and uh, based on the president of the United States saying he was going to blow <laughs> it up, and the lady from the State Department, Norlin saying she was going to blow it up and then it blew up and then there was a text saying we did it uh seems very likely that that is actually what yeah. happened right so there's this fantastic clip it was a kid i think it was in new york somewhere so a younger person and it was the editor of the new york Times, like all of them mm -hmm. right like all the mainstream uh media editors and this kid got up and he's like, you all. And he just laid into them about Nordstrom. And he's like, how can you, you know, they're how can throwing. You defend this? Yeah. And why aren't you reporting on well, it? Well, that's like, I don't even, this isn't the pit rabbit hole I want to go down, but it's just like, so Tucker Car Carlson's off the air. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I haven't read this myself. I haven't confirmed it. Um, I, I don't believe he's not continuing to receive his paycheck though. Oh, right. So that's an, and he makes somewhere between 15 and 20 million a year. So I have no concerns that Tucker Carlson will land wherever Tucker oh, Carlson wants to land, right? I think if he starts his own yeah. channel But or it something. was interesting because everybody was like, oh, it's because of the um, settlement over the Dominion thing. So that, because that seemed timely. And then the Don Lemon thing, which at, at that point I was like, well, that's a weird coincidence. So come to find out if you haven't seen the Don Lemon story, you really should Google it because I thought it was the ignorant comment Don Lemon had made about um, Nikki Haley in saying that women are in their are beyond their prime when they're in their 40s or something like that. I thought that was ignorant enough, but oh no. Someone Appar said you're old if you're 50, here so we go. He, apparently Don Lemon had Vivek Ramaswamy on and he, um, they were talking about race and stuff and Don Lemon said that he, Vivek had no place to talk about people of color and blah, blah, blah. So my takeaway, I looked at Dan this morning, I go, so wait, you understand this. Don Lemon says, we, we have to be concerned about people of color as long as the color is his. Oh, yeah. That and that clip in was... itself is what racism is. Well, I mean, both of those voices, Carlson and Lemon, are sort of slightly anti-war. No. So, so that's a factor. My take was this lit from, you know, like the conspiracy part of me. Because it just seemed weird. The Dominion thing. Okay, that was a I mean, settlement. that's literally BlackRock suing BlackRock. Right. But so they win either side. That's what? how they do it. They play both sides, guys. When I, in the last few weeks, 
Tucker's been really edgy. Like he had Elon Musk on. He's had like all these things that were just a little bit pushing a little bit further than even Tucker usually does. And then I started thinking about what was the biggest thing that like the most controversial. Oh, it was the video of January 6th. Well, so I thought about it and I was like the conspiracy conspiracy theorist in me and this is not necessarily what is the case and i'm not she even means sure the realist well what if the powers that be there's the, the them said okay well tucker's gotta go because he's exposed he's get because there's why don't we know about the jfk who killed jfk yet why don't we know what's in the um the tennessee uh, um shooters uh, uh story there why don't we why is that because um, Glenn Gl Greenwald hired not one, but two different attorneys to sue to get access to that. And both attorneys, after saying they would do it, were like, oh, no, 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 I can't do it. Okay, that, that's, that makes the spiny sense on my back. So what if the, those powers that be said he's getting too close, he's exposing too much of the bad, you know, the permanent DC culture. Mm, and the deep state right? doesn't like it when we talk so about they them. push back and they push back on Fox or whoever and they say, okay, well, you get rid of Tucker. But then the part, this is where I'm in conspiracy. So now we'll also get rid of Don Lemon because we don't want to make it look like we're just going after the right. I mean, it could, it, sure. So anyways, you it'll know, be interesting to see how all that plays out on um, just last week. I think they're making a massive mistake. You know, it's funny, I'm rewatching, or it just started on the, the TV. Um, I think the show's called News Radio, and it's, it's old. I think it was like on TV in South Africa when I was in mm. high school or college or something. And, um, but Joe Rogan is an actor on it. That's too called funny. Called Joe, and he's probably like 20 years right. old or something. He's young and skinny and, you know, Joe Rogan-y. And I thought, wow, you know, if you watch this silly sitcom and you're like, see where we are today. This guy's gonna have hundreds and millions well, of people following him or listening to him or doing his podcast. And podcasts. I think Tucker, like if I'm going back, there was a show called Crossfire years ago. I think on CNN, but don't quote me on that. And that had, um, oh God, I don't even remember. I'm picturing people. Pat Buchanan was on, it was always a left versus right. Mm. Um, Johnny, uh, Governor Sununu was on it for the longest time. And I think Tucker was on that. So it's just funny over time, like all these people change and whatnot. Um, not to, uh, I had another thought. So Biden announced, uh, Robert F. Kennedy announced, um, the Democrats aren't planning I, on having any debates, even though they have an active primary. I do want to mention for folks who, uh, you know, follow more from the Liberty side of things, mm. we do have Pork Fest coming up in June. Mm. That'll sell out. It's the third week in June. Tickets are still available, so definitely go get those. Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. But it looks like we're going to be able to put together a debate between Vivek Ramaswamy, sort of from the 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 right, and Robert Kennedy. That would be really cool. And uh, either as a Soho thing, or of yeah. course, you know, like I went totally nuts, and I was like, oh, we should get Tucker to come uh, moderate and everything. So now <laughs> I'm rating Tucker's, myself yeah, Tucker's in Yeah, Tucker's probably a too little. expensive. Um, well, nice. no, they would have to come do it for for yeah. for the love of uh, freedom, yeah. frankly. But I you know, know, he has a studio up in Maine, in, so in his I'm kind of hoping uh, someone said he. Just I don't know if it's in these, Maine or uh, Vermont. I think it's in Vermont. It's in one of the nearest sta neighboring it's, states. It's, it's. I think it's Maine, oh. and I think it's Woodstock, Maine, which is or a Woodstock, different Vermont. Mm, See, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I used to think it was Maine, and then there was something that he said once that I was like, that just sounds like Northern Vermont. Mm. I mean, it's all close of those by. things up there kind of become yeah. one big um, thing. So. I don't remember what my, there was some other federal thing, but we'll, we'll come back to it when it jumps back into my head. I did make the a list. The most important thing on the list. Taco tour. Taco tour. I figured we <laughs> should at least talk about it because I, the time gets here. So next Thursday, how is that possible? Wow. Next Thursday is the downtown taco tour. Um, I did it once years ago. I don't bother going anymore. It's just too much. It runs, Um, it's on Thursday, May 4th. Not on Cinco de Mayo because apparently that's cultural appropriation. Are you kidding? I am not. Me? I read an article this morning and I'm gonna just start saying some things that I really irk uh -huh. me. So when was the last time you saw an article about how you shouldn't culturally appropriate St. Patrick's Day? 
Because St. Patrick's Day is a religious holiday in Ireland, not a drink fest. But nobody seems to ever have a problem with that. But apparently it's insulting to put a sombrero on for Cinco de Mayo. So anyways. But it's it's not insulting if you do it the day before or the day after. Because then it's not Cinco de Mayo, right? Rationality. next Thursday, May 4th, 4 to 8 p.m., there are 60 or more restaurants selling their tacos for $3 each, cash only. And when I emphasize that, um, I did mention... I did look to see um, Elm Street will be closing at 2 o'clock on that Thursday, completely between Granite and Bridge Street. Chestnut Street, which is the northbound, will remain open. Um, However, all roads at Chestnut towards Elm will be closed, so Hanover and Amherst, all those close. Lake Avenue and Granite Street will remain open as well as Bridge Street. Um, So Elm from Bridge to Granite, Hanover up to Chestnut from Elm, Lowell, up to Kosciuszko Street, which is where... Basically, just plan on downtown's downtown. going to be kind of closed and you got to um, park somewhere else. Well, the parking that's what is always terrible Well, I didn't this. print that. you got to really park far away. you got to park... Well, the, I remember one year the highway was, like, exit six at mm. Amiskeg was actually backed up as people, people were coming well, into town to get here for $3 tacos. If they tacos. close, but if they don't close Granite or Bridge, that should alleviate that problem. Because if the problem is, is if you close Granite, people can't get off, and then they all end up on the Amiskeg Circle. Um, But they do emphasize that if you do park in one of those areas, you won't be able, and don't move it before 2 on Thursday, you won't be able to move to your vehicle till after 9 p.m. the night. So anyways, that's the taco tour next Thursday. Um, nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Uh, three buck tacos. It's it's tons of fun, but it's huge and it's packed. And don't I, expect I, to go to a lot of places. Pick where, look at the map, which I couldn't find right. this morning, but look and see where where you want to hit. And honestly, like I, you know, I mean, I'm a bit of a lighter eater than in the past, but you know, like two it's, tacos two and, and I'm kind of like, oh, I'm full. Um, but. This Saturday, the 29th, from nine in the morning to one p.m., the Friends of the Piscataqua River Park, which I'm involved in, um, are doing a big park cleanup. That's the park that runs from the George Smith Comp- Sports Complex on Precourt Street. Through the woods. Oh, is that cr- what it's called? George Smith? That, the, yes. The, okay, because I never use the right words I don't either. describing and any of those areas. I'm like, the other side of the yeah. pedestrian bridge of the ice rink. From of- there, <laughs> across the bridge, over to the West Side Ice Arena, and... Um, it starts at nine. It's a rain or shine event. Chances are it's going to rain. Um, we've, we're planning on having four teams go out. We're cutting, uh, removing invasive plants, pri- primarily um, bittersweet, but there's three. There's basically floral rose, um, not weed, and bittersweet that run rampant. Different things in different areas, but the bittersweet is a killer. And picking up trash. Mm, um, we it's... are not going to be clearing homeless encampments those we're leaving for the city to deal with but we are identifying those spaces um lunch for all volunteers at one o'clock you can go to www.merrimack.org which is the merrimack river watershed council and click through there and find the registration so that you don't have to sign all the waivers in and person. then actually on friday i forget what time i I'll, I'll post it in the comments after the show Parkside Park next to Parkside School where we have our oh, yeah, the garden awesome thing. community garden. Uh, the beds are uh, getting ready. Yep. We're going to go yep. ready out the beds. Uh, Louie and I rented yep. one for this year. I believe there's still some available. Yep. I'll just update or I'll put it on my website if folks are uh, curious. Yes. But I think you can rent a bed. Yep. And so... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try yeah, some of that so garden. That's right next to Parkside Middle, on Middle School on Friday. What time do you know? I'm not 100% sure, so I will put it in the comments awesome. on Facebook and on the YouTube. Um, the so, them tube. The them tube. <laughs> so I learned this week that there is no animal shelter plant sale. What? No, it was so sad. So Why? I saw a post that showed them giving away all this stuff, you know, like extra kennels and stuff, but also in there were wagons. And I'm like, those are the wagons from the plant sale. And then I saw all the plastic pots. And I, so I commented and said, no plant sale. And they said, no, they're not going to do the plant sale anymore. However, they t- sent a thing over. Apparently they're on Saturday, June 3rd which would have been about the same time as that plant sale from nine in the morning till two in the afternoon at the Burger King in North Manchester. So on DW highway, kind of near Hannaford, uh, the tailgate transport and rescue, which is another dog group will be having a plant sale fundraiser. So 
I don't know if it'll be as good. I'm very, very disappointed. Like mm, that was like sad. that I, was a big deal for me. I went every year. I got most of my best plants from I that plant sale. I was just gonna say it's um, like you get mint, mint plants. Everything yeah. that I've split everything in my there garden, is, that's it's happy. been. I, I've never had bad plants there. So. Um, I know there's other plant sales in the area. The Dairy Garden Club usually does a really good one. The Bedford Garden Club does one. It was a little weak the last time I went, but as I find out more information about there's any plant sales. There's a good one sales, in Amherst, too. I yeah, feel there's like the Amherst one, one at the school there. It's pretty big. Um, they had a lot of hostas. Yeah, well, hosta, you can, can't. You don't have to, you can't kill a <laughs> um, so that I'll, I'll keep not you even I can kill a hosta. Uh, let's see. So I don't know if you, I I missed a week, so you're gonna have to bear with me. So the last time we taped two weeks ago, when I arrived, it was a really really windy day, and there were all these people standing out on Elm Street, and I could tell that it was like media presence, and I was like, is somebody important coming? Is a candidate? <laughs> And it was so windy, but Joyce Craig was there, and June Trishiani, and Pat Long, and the guy from the TV, you know, Manchester Public Television. And I was like, what the hell is going on? There was no, it was weird. And when I left, I was still like, what is going on? Then I read, it was a ribbon cutting for the trash cans. Can, and I, I, just, thought, can I just actually, since like, when I'm, do we have ribbon cuttings for trash cans? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. These are okay. I'm not anti trash can, don't get me wrong, but. There was like in this picture, there's a dozen people doing a ribbon cutting at a trash can. Come on, folks. Um, the good thing about these, I, I had to laugh. I'm going to read Joyce Craig's thing. Downtown's new Big Belly Smart Trash Receptacles are a great example of how we can utilize state-of-the-art technology to make positive changes is in addressing street cleanliness while supporting sustainability and cost savings. Okay, the problem with street cleanliness in downtown Manchester really doesn't have to do with the trash can, I don't think. No, um, I think we went from having almost no trash to cans having one every to three standing, feet. you know, if we stand in front of the studio here. You can see like 10. Which, you know, seems strange. Also, these are, uh, are those the, donuts or Cheerios? I was trying I to don't, figure no, out. I because think they're, they're Cheerios. Also apparently there was a local decorated. artist that uh, came up with the, there's four of them. Um, they are solar powered. They compact the trash down and they tell the highway department when they need emptying. I mean, I'm not against that part by any means. I just thought it was absolutely insane that Alderman and the mayor and all these different people Took to, stood on Elm Street in the wind to do a ribbon cutting for a trash can. So anyways, that's just absurd. We're just gonna put that in the category of called absurd. Um, well, it's literally on this picture here. I wouldn't even let you zoom in, but they're two, four, six, eight, ten. So 10 government people that's for what they, hours. Uh, like, it what was did at that least cost? an hour. What, what did that cost the city? Like, right. you know, for, um, for what? So, so that we could talk about it that's on right. the show, guys. Um, this was also from a few weeks ago. I think it never got on. I'm not going to really talk much about it. Oh, I want to go back. I'm going to backwards. In the same article about the trash can, I noticed that um, the aldermen have raised taxi rates in the city for the first time in 13 years and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I thought... Do we really need the government to set the taxi rate? No. What's up with that? Why are why does the government say how much somebody can charge me to get me from point A to point B? Just had to say that out loud. Um, there was an article recently about uh, transparency in budgets and an organization called Truth in Accounting, which I believe is out of Illinois. Um, looks at city budgets across the country and then great, gives them a grade. And both Manchester and Nashua scored a D. Um, it says, partly due to the lack of transparency, um, the person doing this found that Manchester taxpayers face $276 million in debt. And Is that pension debt? We don't know because it's never oh, talked about. It's That's the problem. They don't ever like Ew, when they're doing we the have budget, a three hundred million say, dollar hole. Oops. Hey, oh, and we have this. Like it would be nice as a taxpayer to know how much debt we have. So when we're deciding, should we buy big belly trash cans or pay off some of the debt? So that was one thing. Um, on the debt and spending, um, so yesterday I went up to the state Senate mm -hmm. and a spoke in favor of, I think it's House Bill 464, which expands education freedom accounts across a variety of um, groups of children. 
completely unrelated to family income. It is basically kids who are in foster care, kids who are military kids, um, homeless children, uh, kids that are subject to like repeated bullying, like that they can't get out from under, and those going to really, really poor performing schools. Uh, because all of those kids, it doesn't matter how much parents make, if you're in a school that's so badly performing, you should be able to get some help to go someplace else. And like the foster kids have to move from time to time and homeless kids don't necessarily have one neighborhood. So it all makes sense. And you know, like if you're lo really trying to provide opportunities for children to get a good education, I don't know why you would be opposed to this. Um, so, but this isn't the EFA. This is an EFA. This is expanding the EFA. Currently okay. EFAs are only eligible to families who are 300% of the poverty line or under, okay? And we tried to there uh, is up a, that to 350, is, but that didn't pass. No, it did. The 350% did pass and is also in the Senate. Um, they had a hearing on that yesterday. So oh, the, I, how, they I wanted it to be 500% and uh, it didn't get that okay. approval. They, got, they had to come to an agreement okay. on 350, um, which still, you know, it makes it better um because like kate baker was i mean it all makes it better but can i just say it all makes it worse too because every time we carve out this little group this little group this little group this little group you're making government bigger because now you've created groups that someone has to follow well, yeah, and then in 30 years you're like oh we have a 300 million dollar hole in our there's budget actual, because we don't actually know what's I happening i don't believe anymore. there's actually any um expansion in government for the the monitoring of these i think because then why are we writing the bill well we could just have all the kids <laughs> stay in the public schools that suck we have options they can all stay where they are and fail because two of the schools... No, what I'm saying, I understand this is expanding school choice and I'm totally for it. What I'm not for is we keep writing these bills where we're tweaking because and the, the little things... Because that's the only way it can be passed. And then it's like, but all you're doing is you're making it harder and harder and harder for anyone to regulate any of these things. But I cannot wait for our AI overlords. We can get rid of, like once the trash cans can clean themselves, we can and cut all the budget, uh, all the pensions, and w we can just have a r computer tell us, well, how much money needs to go where because- So from my perspective, the reason why we keep carving them out is you're never, you, the, the legislature nor the, the people in, in New Hampshire, the majority, all, enough people in New Hampshire are ready for 100% school choice for every child. I think we're getting closer. Um, but they can't get things passed. So the 300% threshold is a starting point. If it goes up to 350, you've just expanded that. If, if this bill passes, it expands quite a bit because here in Manchester, just in Manchester, um, Beach Street School and Henry Wilson School both fall into that. So they have less than 10% proficiency in language, math, and science. And I'm willing to bet they don't have doors on their toilets. So, that I don't know what we're doing in the schools that 90% of the kids, there's 913 odd kids between these two schools, about three quarters of them probably already qualify for EFAs because of the family income, because that it's a poor, it's a poor neighborhoods, but there still leaves like 200 and some odd kids that wouldn't probably qualify that if this passes, those 200 kids could automatically um, switch. And I was surprised because I was like, well, what, but they still have to put in more money uh, but I, Kate was saying, telling me yesterday, like the average um, EFA is about five thousand dollars. Tuition at St. Benedict's is only about five thousand dollars, which I did not realize. So, so this is a little unknown secret in New Hampshire that I fight with people on social about all the time. Is yes, there are a handful of very expensive private schools in New Hampshire, you know. Yeah. But when you actually start stacking private schools mm -hmm. next to public schools, they're either almost on yeah. par, or when you actually factor yep. in the benefits and the the long term yep. costs. It's, they're cheaper. It's cheaper to yeah. go to a private school that has much higher <laughs> and better outcomes. Why do they have better outcomes? Because there's a market incentive in order to deliver a service to your customer. Yep. Yep. Meaning if you're paying someone for your kid to learn to read and write, they should be able to read and write yeah, when they, they're um, done. I was surprised at the Senate hearing, listening to the opposition, different lobbyists get up and talk about, but if we take these kids out of the school, what does that mean for the kids left in the school? And I'm like, you just almost admitted that 
poor, poor kids stuck in the rest. Well, that, but then also going back to my point about these different groups, they have a point. I mean, maybe maybe people aren't ready yet. I don't understand why, quite simply, I feel like every Granite Stater could grasp the idea mm -hmm. of everyone gets $5,000 and your kid can go wherever they want. That creates the incentives for the public schools that care about their children and the wonderful teachers there, mm -hmm. maybe boot some of the, the red tape start an awesome school, yeah. right? Like the thing is we just, we stare at these solutions and we just go, there's only one way. And I'm like, I think what surely you're, I people think what have to understand. What's interesting, uh, just one little side note because we're running out of time and I want to mention one other thing is um, Wilson, Sc Wilson School and Beach Street School, there's a higher density of minorities in, uh, and like, like I said, three quarters of those families are low income. And it's ironic to me that the, the same people that the Democrats always claim to be wanting to help are the same people that they refuse to help. It's always that way. Speaking of Democrats refusing to help, um, Kevin Kavanaugh got in the mayor's race. So that. now there are three Democrats, June Trisiani, Will Stewart, and Kevin Kavanaugh um, running for mayor, which means the Ward 1 alderman seat opens up. Hmm. It's an interesting thing since... Ke we just won that Senate seat. Right. Maybe there's a tide turning. Oh, um, and cool. the Republican Jay Ruel. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I don't know what else. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> I'd love to talk more about education funding, but that's like, we, we, we there's could, a Maybe lot. let's get our teeth into that a little yeah. bit. But, you know, I think folks are just... I, it is interesting. I, 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 I'm starting to think that people are going to be ready for things that unite us and simpler yes. solutions. I think like people are tired of this at the, at the you know. Yep. So I, again, you know, I think even just these candidates that we're seeing. So an interesting thing I saw last night and I do, it's like one of those things you can't put your finger on, but you see it and you're like, yeah. So recently Anheuser-Busch did the whole um, transgender marketing campaign and it back it blew up and all sorts of Americans are bo are boycotting Anheuser-Busch products and they're not buying Bud Light. And somebody said- No one should be buying Bud Light I know, anyway. it's really bad, but, um, but you wonder like, but that's not usually how Americans react. We usually react, but it's like this much and it's on mm. social media and then you actually still go out right. and buy the product. Yep. This doesn't seem to be that way. It makes me wonder like, I don't think it's the transgender issue that's driving it. I do think that Americans are getting very, very frustrated and are starting to be like, you know what? I'm not doing it. You know what? I'm tired of people lying to me. You know what? I'm tired of being force fed things that I don't agree with. I'm tired force of you jabbed. using my beer to promote this and vice versa. So I do think that there might be a, like a, t uh, a ratchet that changed in the average American who is just not okay. I mean, they say well, maybe Twitter and the fact that we're not censoring half the country. Seventy-five percent of America does, does not, not think we're go Biden does run. not think we're going in the right direction. Right, and That's seventy telling. percent of Democrats said Biden yeah. shouldn't run again. So, so well, what's that machine? Speaking of, Trump will be in um, town on Thursday. So if you have to be downtown, avoid the area because we'll be closing roads and all that good stuff. Uh, that's all we got. We're out of time, and we will be back next week with more fun stories for you. I'm sure. Hey guys, bye.